Hey everybody, this is Tom from Rocket Restorations, and today we're gonna to debunk a popular Mopar myth, and then pretty much immediately contradict ourselves. So I can't tell you how many times, hundreds and hundreds of times, I go onto Mopar message boards and everybody says, hey, I've got a 440 motor, but it's a six pack. How do I prove it's a six pack motor? Well, the short answer is the blocks are the same. A 1970 440 HP uh, U-code 375 horse motor and a V-code 370, 390 horse, 446 barrel or six pack, there is no difference in the block. They are identical. Uh, the markings are identical. The casting numbers are identical. The actual block itself, you cannot tell the difference. So, um, but uh, not to bury the lead a little bit, but uh, basically this block is a 1970 Sport Fury GT V-code 440 block. And how do we know that? Well. Let's dive into it. So this came up because we just got this beautiful 1970 Sport Fury GT factory V-code car. Yes, it's real. VOD. And we're gonna be pulling this motor out next week and we'll be doing a video on that too. So a little background before I get into the nitty gritty. So uh, a friend of ours, Dale, he lives in South Dakota. Good Mopar dude. I bought a car from him last year and we were just kind of talking and BSing we were out visiting his place and you know he just kind of casually mentioned that he had a motor from a v-code 1970 sport free gt and i was like wow that is really really cool so trev who works here at the shop owns one and did not have the original motor in it and of course trev thought to himself well i need that for my car trev's car is pretty awesome too i know a ton of people comment on the last one that a guy named dan corley collected three of these things and they're posted all over the internet 10, 15 years ago. Well, Trev ended up with one of them. His is black with black interior. Came from the Frank Mitchell collection out in uh, Georgia. And uh, here's a picture of the car as it sits. And that's the car this motor is going to go into. How do we know this is a six pack motor when you can't tell if a block is a U code or a V code? Well, we're lucky in this case that it has two stuck pistons in it. And because it has two stuck pistons, we know these are factory pistons right here because they have the big valve release for a six pack block. So we know this is a six pack motor. Okay, so I'm sure I have a couple of people like going up on their keyboard to type out a comment. Oh, that could have been rebuilt. How do you know those original pistons? Well, glad you asked. This is a piston that came out of the motor. Obviously six came out, two are still stuck. And right there is the factory port number. Boom. Factory piston, still stuck in the motor, six pack motor. Also, we have the original bearings that came out of it, which are date coded. Here's a picture of those. Uh, I don't wanna twist the motor over. I'm too lazy to do that. But there's a picture of that too, showing that it is original. And how do we know it's a six pack Fury GT motor? Well, we go down here and look at the VIN. Right here, it is OF147217. And what that F means is it, it was built at the Newark plant and that was a C body only plant. So because of that VIN and the stuck pistons, we know it was a six pack motor and out of the C body. So, you know, here's the top pad. This is how you identify one of these 440s. So it says F440, F is the year, 1970. I don't know why F is 1970. They just did, they started with A and 65 and just the letters went up to so G71, H is 72, blah, blah, blah. And then the 1015 right there is the assembly date. This was built on 1015, 1969. And of course that's 1970 model year because the 70 model year started August 1st. So uh, August, you know, August 1st to, you know, June 70 was 1970 model year and it's HP on the side. You can tell it's original because it still has the cross hatch marks on it right there. Another big myth we see online too is, so there's two different stampings on these. There's HP and HP2. And everyone said like, ooh, it's an HP2 motor. It has to be a six pack. No, all that was was the second shift in the plant. So the, if it just said HP, it was the first shift of the day. If it said HP2, it was the second shift of the day. That's it. Nothing more complicated than that. Still doesn't tell you whether it's a six pack or a four barrel. Also, this thing has the casting date on the side right there of 731.69. And again, that's right in line with what you want to see with the build date uh, built several months before it was assembled. And then what are the other differences between a six pack motor and a 440 U-code motor? They all had the heavy duty rods. They all had the, uh, they all had the balancer that was heavier duty. 
the heavier duty rods are often called six pack rods, which is kind of a misnomer. Every 440 HP and six pack got them. But you can see down there, see that big weight on the balancer? That's different than a normal 440 balancer. It's heavy duty for the heavier duty rods. And of course, this is the complete motor on the six barrel Fury. The this is what a normal balancer looks like. This is on a 68 440 HP, but see how it's smooth, doesn't have that big extra weight on there. That means it has the standard 440 rods on it. Well, other differences, they actually have a double roller timing cam. So here is the original crank that came out of it. And you can see it has a double roller gear on there. So on a non six pack, it would just be a single roller, just one cog on there. And then they also had a three bolt cam. Fortunately, we did not get the cam for this, um, but the cams are three bolt instead of one bolt, which is a little more heavy duty. Here's the actual dealer data book that shows you the differences as well. Special features of the 446 barrel. They had a windage tray, high lift cam, and of course the carburetors, dual points, heavy duty Hemi valve springs in the heads, dampers, chrome flashed valve stems, hard exhaust tips, molly filled rings, and high tension oil rings. So just a lot more heavy duty stuff, again with a difference in the cam. Now these, of course, used 906 heads, which is the same as any other big block head 1970, but they did have heavier duty valve springs on them. Just wanted to show you the original heads too. These original 906 heads with the dampers, date code matches. I think it's 926.69, real close to the engine. Also has a unique C-body bracket on the back. Now you're probably asking yourself, what is the difference between a C-body 446 barrel or six pack? and a B body or E body one. Well, there are several differences and let me show you. The water pump's the same, the water pump housing's the same, the motor mounts are even the same on a C body. So here's one big difference here. So in 1970, they went to a seven quart oil pan. So this is actually one of the reproductions that are out there. Uh, I think uh, we got that from Mancini. We're doing a 440 build on a 69 charger and we usually put these seven quart pans in just cause it's nice having the extra capacity on them. The C body pan used a, what's called a 187 pan. And these are kind of famous cause if you're doing a big block A body, this is kind of the go-to pan for that because um, they have a notch in them to clear the steering linkage. On an A-body, you need that. There's a big block A-body pan that they used, which is a unique casting on it, um, but uh, or casting part number on it, um, and it's unique. And here's a picture of one. Uh, luckily, Vans Auto actually makes these now, so you can get the big block A-body pans. Okay, so but it's not just a regular 187 pan. It's got some special stuff to it. So they have what's called baffles in them. So of course the seven quart pan has them and this regular 187 pan does not. This one does in the six barrel motor got these special baffles and you're probably wondering what these are for. These are basically control oil. So, you know, the oil sits in the pan there and when you floor it like in a drag race or something, all the oil is gonna try to slosh to whatever way you're going, whether under braking or acceleration. And what the baffles do is they keep the oil in there. It's the same thing with the windage tray. The windage tray goes underneath the crank to keep oil off the crank to reduce windage. It actually has a thing back here too, which is kind of neat. You don't even see that on the seven quart pan, but it kind of keeps all the oil in there so it doesn't splash around. You keep the oil in the pickup and it goes up the engine where it needs to be. All right, now I'm gonna show you the difference in exhaust manifolds. So right here is a B-body exhaust manifold. The part number right there is 295-1866. And you can see it's a fairly conventional HP. So it kind of goes up and down and out like that. And then the C body ones have a different kink on them to basically clear the torsion bar. So I've got three different exhaust manifolds here. So this is the 6869 version. Part number is 2863409, I think. It's kind of hard to read these part numbers, where it goes out at a different angle than the B body one. And then in 70, they changed the angle slightly. I think for a better exhaust routing. And there's basically the two exhaust manifolds they used on these. So this is the 383 one right here. And the part number, it's 295, I think it's 1216. But this is 383 only. And the reason it's 383 is because it's slightly smaller. So I have a, this is a factory NOS two and a half inch gasket here. So you can see all the material there. See how it's smaller than the opening on this. So the bolt pattern's the same on here but it's a bit smaller than this one. And this one's the 441 right here. Again, unique part number, 440 HP and 446 barrel only. Extremely hard to find. But you can see right here, the opening's a little bit bigger on this. And I don't know if they tooled it up just for the six barrel cars and then put it on the other 440s. I can't imagine it would make that much of a horsepower difference, but the opening is slightly bigger on that. I'd be really curious to dyno each one of these and see if one's a little more restrictive. 
Also, and I think this is the biggest reason for the part number change, but see the angle on here? So a raised deck block of 440 compared to a 383, which is a low deck block, is like an inch taller, I think, something like that. So I think they actually changed the angle on those to make it easier to clear the torsion bar. On the early one, it's all the same part number, so they had problems with the clearance. They actually fixed that in 70, which kind of made it annoying. There was different exhaust, different exhaust manifolds for 440 versus 383, but you know, I'm sure that was an assembly thing for ease of assembly. And these have these fins right here. And what this is for is it's a preheater for the engine. So on top of the, the shield right here, there's a hose that goes up to the air cleaner and then it puts warm exhaust air into the carburetor so it warms up slightly faster. So now back to our example car here. Uh, there is no stove on this one because on a six barrel car, there's nowhere to go to the air cleaner. So on the dual snorkel air cleaner, it has a snorkel that goes way out to the side over here on the dual snorkel, and then the hose goes up to the air cleaner. On this car, there's nowhere to go because the six pack air cleaner is just in and of itself with no provision for it. So it doesn't use the heat stove. Well, hope you guys learned something. As again, uh, if you just have a bare 440 block, there's no way to tell whether it's a 440 six barrel motor or a U-code 440 uh, four barrel, um, except in this one certain instance. I mean, and we're lucky that the pistons are stuck in here because that's how we were able to tell on this. And special shout out to Dale. Uh, Dale's a good dude. Uh, he uh, let Trev buy this one from him and Trev's super excited to put it into his car. And we were just kind of, you know, talking in the shop last week and, Trev decided, you know, if we're doing one six barrel motor, we might as well do two. So I think we're gonna build this one up at the same time. Jamie's gonna be super excited about this. Jamie from Dead Dodge Garage, he does all of our engine building here. He's gonna be super excited to do two of these at once. So that car over there, we're gonna get the motor pulled out of that next week and get it apart. That one's stuck as well. We're gonna get this one apart this week too and get them both down in the machine shop. Also want to thank Trev for letting me do a video on this motor. I think it's really cool. I think it's really neat. This is a pretty unique opportunity to, to find this. You know, when we we're doing the, the, the six barrel video last week, we mentioned that there's 10 known 440 six barrel V code sport free GTs out there. And there's 13 known VINs. Well, this is one of the known VINs, but we don't have, you know, the car doesn't obviously exist anymore. It was in a wrecking yard and got crushed, unfortunately. So, but, uh, but yeah, we know it's known VIN cause it's got the original piston in there. Uh, I just want to also just thank everybody out there for watching. We had 10,000 subscribers this week. Never thought I'd hit that point. Really appreciate everybody subscribing. This is Tom from Rocket Restorations, and we'll talk to you soon.